Hello everybody, I come in the name of the Lord. When it says, do not treat prophecy with contempt, yeah? Uh, at this time, it has been told, it has been uh, declared pretty much, is that all prophecy and vision will be sealed. And one thing that had happened was during the eclipse, um, that was when prophecy and vision was sealed, yeah? Uh, because when it talks about when the sun was as black as sackcloth, yeah, we know that a prophet's attire is hair, the camel hair, black camel hair. It went from Elijah to Elisha and then John the Baptist also. And within the spirit of the prophet, there is a deceptive spirit that had volunteered to be as an advocate for the Lord's will. And we can read that in First Kings, that it would be a lying spirit on the tips of the prophet's tongue. Because in order to fulfill prophecy and for everything to become as perfect, uh, the wisdom of the wise gets frustrated, yeah? Um and the schemes of the intellectual, they they turn um, sorry, they turn null and void, yeah. And that is so that everything can remain impartial, yeah. No one can become so haughty in their prophetic vision. But with the uh, solar eclipse being as black as sackcloth, it was. Um, minister to me by the spirit that that was the sealing of the vision and the prophecy and after that that the great delusion will come right and a lot of the Elohim realm will come around and um, lots of dreams and visions will still be uh, fortified in people because God has poured his spirit on everyone and from the least to the greatest from the slave to the free all will prophesy yeah and so we have entered that shift into the great delusion that God sends down and makes it so real that people can, will believe it, save for the elect. Yeah, the elect cannot be deceived. And so when it tells us to not treat prophecy with contempt, it gives us the ways on how to do it. Yeah. And it says, and it's going to be through discernment, which is a spiritual type of discipline that teaches you. Yeah. It's not something that you can learn. That is called preference. Discernment is taught by the spirit. And what it is, is a sifting. Yeah, what you do is you hold on to what is good when you're listening, paying attention to how you hear, as Jesus told us. Yeah, because that's going to be your measure. You hold on to what is good and you uh, discard everything that's evil. That's a sifting. Yeah, um, and as we know, there is a type of spiritual sifting that can come about through people. Jesus told Simon Peter and even his disciples that Satan has wanted to sift you. Yeah, um, what that is, is just like how a sift does what it does. Yeah, it all the sludge and the uh, evil, I want to say, gets cast away. And what is left is what is good. And that's what you hold on to. That's the value. And in this time, for those who have discernment, that is how you are to maintain your composure when dealing with prophecy and vision. Because at this time with the darkness that has come about and the great deception and the twisting yeah those twistings the frustrations of the wi the words of the wise and the intellectualizing um ways of man which are schemes yeah um it will get frustrated and if you hold on to everything and build up on that after this you will then have a bitter seed in you that can grow up when you think that you're all good and then when your harvest comes yeah because a man will reap what he sows um that's why you cannot be deceived because it's inevitable whatever you give out you will it's inevitable that it'll pop up you'll be revealed sooner or later um but you don't want a bitter root yeah there so that you're having um false type of fruits that come about like a um, how it says, who p picks um, figs from thorn bushes and grapes from thistles kind of thing, yeah? Um, as you know, no one can produce fruit if they're not on the true vine and they don't remain in him. But there is a false 
fruit, which isn't a fruit, yeah? But it looks like a grape. Why can't you eat it? Because it comes from a thistle bush. And how do you know if it's a thistle bush to that grape? Then all of a sudden you'll get sour grapes, yeah? Poison. And so when you are maintaining your uh, righteousness in this time and watching, when it comes to prophecies and visions, which everyone will be able to have, yeah, because God has poured his spirit on everyone. There's an impartiality. Um, and when I say impartiality, no bias, yeah? It, there's no discrimination. There's no discrimination in the Holy Spirit. That's why. Um, you have to patiently endure it, but don't treat it with contempt. You have to sift it and using discernment. And if you don't have the discernment and you're sifting it and doing it because of a preferential type of discrimination, yeah, then that's not of the Holy Spirit and you will not have a good harvest. You will have a little bit of poison inside of you and then you'll turn into a scoffer, yeah, scoffer's type of will. And so I just wanted to share that with you, that one of the six things that the Gentiles had to, was to fulfill during the times of the Gentiles, which we're going to the half a time already, in the half a time already, um, is one of the six things was close up all visions and prophecy, yeah? And one of the things that I had opened was the scroll of Daniel that he closed up, but then it was re-closed up. Yeah, so there's one more time that it's going to be opened, um, and that's going like that's the final. That's going to remain open at the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is going to be the only thing that's been open. Yeah, um, so that's been resealed, and then all of visions and prophecies for that fulfillment has now come about. Yet everyone, as they continue on will still have visions and prophecies and that's why it's been told to us to be very uh watchful and to make sure not to be deceived um don't get caught up in the worship of angels because that's the realm of elohim like i keep saying and that's there's going to be a lot of pizzazz in that it's going to be easy for us to be glamored there and think that that is the final and it's not yeah the realm of elohim is only sparks of light it is not the light they do not sustain their own light they're close to the light but they are never going to be the light so it's you can see how people will be like, oh, I had this dream, it was so real, and this is what happened, and now it's coming to pass, yeah? That's true, but with yourself, if you are as the children of light, yeah, in that maturity of righteousness, it is for you to discern, because you will not be able to, you will not be deceived, yeah? Everyone else will be deceived, save for the elect, and the children of light are part of the elect. And so what you do is you put on the, armor of light yeah because everyone has this armor of god yeah that is going to be another type of um impartiality yeah but the armor of light it's the breastplate of faith yeah and the helmet of the hope for salvation so you know that everyone has salvation but there's a great salvation yeah and that's going to be what you need in order to be in the head with the Lord, not the body, yeah, but the head, because that's where glory is. You'll be glorying in the Lord who glories in the majestic glory. And, and anyone who doesn't have that type of armor, yeah, um, with the armor of light, they will still be almost like obnoxious, yeah, to the head. They belong in the body or the feet. Um, and so the breastplate of faith, and love, yeah? And the helmet for the hope of salvation is for the children of light. And with the children of light, you already know that the fruits of light, yeah, is all goodness, um, all righteousness, um, and all faith in faith, yeah? Um, in truth, sorry. Uh, it's all goodness, all righteousness, in truth. That's the fruits of light. And so you need to know how to produce a goodness and a righteousness, which is not good and which is not right, yeah? There's these nesses. That's why you will be like your master, but then with the likeness, yeah, you will be like the son because no one knows the son except the father. Um, and so in that, you will have a semblance of what is lawlessness, as we know, lawlessness is sin, but you will be on the flip side of that, which you know that your sin is the one, uh, is Jesus Christ, the one who has been made sin to be sin for you. 
um, because he has no sin. And so if he is the sin that you are, then you can have no sin because he takes it all for you. And then you are in a lawlessness, which is going to be the counterfeit of where we're going into that impartiality that will bring about the man of lawlessness who will be in the place of desolation. Yeah, who will bring about the desolation and standing in the place of the holy place. Um, and in that is going to be the unity where when he's there, it will be aligned and the glory of God will come and consume him with one breath. Life will eat death. Um, kind of thing. And so in this time and age, don't treat prophecy with contempt, but be hyper aware because most of the prophets are lying. There's huge semblances of lies in there. And uh, if you don't know how to sift it, yeah, then you will partake in some uh, nasty fruit. <laughs> so I come in the name of the Lord. Thank you.